software activation. We all need to activate software sometimes, maybe for work, maybe for studying. So you download a program from the internet and upon opening the program, it asks you to activate it. It's fine. We all love to activate and get full version of any program we use. So me, I was trying to activate a software. I was instructed to download uh, the uh, activation file. And when I looked at the activation file, that's what I found. That's the activation file. That's where my alarms went off and I aborted the activation process. I wanted to analyze this file, see what it does. Okay, so I opened a safe environment. In this case, it was my own virtual machine. And I opened this file and that's what I found. I know it don't make sense for you, and uh, for me, actually, also, they don't make sense. I have to do some decoding to understand what's going on. I use script named batch interpreter. And using the script, I was able to uh, transform this file into a readable content. So see, it is a batch file indeed, but it doesn't activate any software. It, what it does, it downloads a partial script from the uh, internet. It retrieves a URL from the web. Here it looks empty, but I'm going to show you the quick, the full URL. So now I know that this self-acclaimed activation file is not an activation file. It is just a dropper. It retrieves something from the web and stores it in my machine for some purpose. Now we're going to find out what is the final file. What is the contents of the script that was retrieved by the activation file? Now here it is uh, checking on the model of the computer. If it matches one of these values. Amazon, EC2, Google, Zen, Parallels, Microsoft, Google. Technically, it is checking whether the computer model matches one of these models. Uh, it exits. Uh, it's very clear now. The purpose of the script becomes clear now. Basically, it is checking whether the operating system of the target is hosted on, in the cloud or it is a virtualized environment. And when all of these checks are passed, then it moves on to the next stage where it retrieves the actual activation or the actual, let me call it the malware. This is the IP address, and that is the uh, final executable. Now we know that we are dealing with a computer virus. So this batch file made me go these long trips in order to retrieve the final activation file. Now this is a clear example of a malware. A malware that first, as we saw earlier, it tries to figure out whether it is installed in a virtualized environment. My final message is when you activate a software on your computer, it doesn't matter the operating system, Mac, Windows, or Linux. When you activate a software, make sure that the activation is an actual key, right? It's a key that you copy from an email. Usually when you buy a program, they deliver you the activation key through email, right? Or from the login, uh, from the interface that you have got access to when you bought the program first. Now, activate the program using only key. Don't download any file to activate any program. Stay safe.